Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to class session six. In this class session, we're going to review program one. You were assigned program one in the previous class session, and now we're going to step through and I will show you my implementation of program one. We begin by looking at the structure. The structure for the neural network is relatively simple. Inputs one and two are done in the same way as the XOR problem that we looked at. This is simply the left and right hand operators, operator 1 and 2. Inputs 3, 4, and 5 designate what sort of a operation this is. If it's an AND, then the input 3 will have a value of 1, inputs 4 and 5 will be 0. We will never have a case where one of the inputs 3, 4, and 5 is true, or 1, and another one as well. This is really like a radio button in the GUI. You can only have one of three, four, or five set to true and the others must all be false. This is how we choose the operator type that the neural network is to work on. This allows us to have all three supported in one neural network. Part of this assignment was to create a CSV file to train the neural network. Here you see the CSV file that I created. The first two columns are the inputs to the logical operators. The three color groups are the three different operators that we are using. The first green group is AND, blue is OR, red is exclusive OR. The colors really don't exist in the file. I just did that to show you where the groupings fall. The first two columns are the the operands to be passed in. The next column, the third, is the output. And the last three columns designate if this is an AND, an OR, or exclusive OR. And if you look at the red, green, and blue parts, you'll see that, they, that each part has a 1 going all the way down its appropriate column to designate it as that particular operator type. The main method starts out easy enough. We instantiate a new instance of program 1. Then I call a load method that will actually load the CSV file. This loads the CSV file and creates the training data. Then I call create network, which is going to create the neural network. And then I call train, which is going to actually train the neural network. Now there's many ways to construct this program. This is just the way that I decided to logically break it down. We will now look at, after these calls are done, it actually evaluates the data. And here we see the actual evaluation phase of the program. Once we have trained the neural network, we try it on a variety of operators to see what the results are. The results are printed to the screen, and you can see how it performs with an AND, an exclusive OR, an AND, and another OR with a variety of arguments. This doesn't try every possible combination, but this gives us a general idea that the program is, in fact, working once it's been trained. We begin by calling the load routine. The load routine accepts a file name and it's going to actually read the CSV file. We actually read it twice. First to find out how many lines there are in the CSV file so that we can properly allocate the array to hold this file. And that's what you see here. We use the read CSV class which was provided by the download for both the book and the class. Though make sure you download the one from the class because I did extend the read CSV file just slightly for the class. Here we pass in two parameters, the file name and false. False means that there are no headers on the CSV file, because remember the CSV file was just raw data. And we loop over every, every line in the file and we increment the size variable. This counts the number of lines in the CSV file. Next we will allocate it. Now that we know the size of the data set, we allocate the input and ideal arrays. They are allocated to be of size determined by the size variable. The second dimension is not defined. You only define the first dimension when you declare a two-dimensional C-sharp array in this way. The second dimension size will be defined as we actually build the training set. So for now, we just put it in as a empty bracket. And then finally, we actually load the file into the array. We set an index variable to keep track of which array element we are currently loading. 
we create another read CSV object so that we can read it in. We specify the file name and again that there are no headers by the false. And we loop every time CSV next returns true, we know that we have another row to read. We place these values into the input and one into the ideal. The second column, starting at zero, the second column, which is actually the third real column, is put into the, the zeroth array element of the ideal. The others are placed into the various locations that they belong in for the input array. This reads the entire file into the input and ideal arrays and in a format that it is ready to train the neural network. And here you see how the neural network is trained. The train method accomplishes this. This is really little different than the training that we used for the exclusive OR. We create a backpropagation training object with a learning rate of 0.7 or 70%, a momentum of 80%. We keep count of which epoch we're currently in, and we begin to leap, loop through the training algorithm. Each iteration we call the iteration function, and we print out the progress showing the current error rate using root mean square error. As we loop through, we will stop at either 5,000 epochs or we'll stop early if the error has reached less than a single percentage point. This will continue, and when the function returns, the neural network will be trained according to the parameters specified and will be ready for use. The evaluate function is used to evaluate one of the operators using the neural network. You can see the evaluate function accepts two parameters, opt1 and opt2, which are the two operands used for the logical operator. The operation specifies a constant, which specifies whether we're using the and, or, or exclusive, or logical operator. You can see that the input array is created first thing. It has the number of columns specified by the neural network. The operand 1 and operand 2 are placed into the first two locations of the input array. And then, based on which operand we're actually using, we set the second, third, or fourth array element to the correct value. This specifies to the neural network which operator we're actually using. The output is then retrieved, and this is ideally the output that would correspond to the logical operator you chose. This concludes class six. In class seven, you will learn about another way to train a feed-forward neural network. We will learn about simulated annealing. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C-Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.